Hey everyone, today we'll be implementing a dynamic stack using an array. So let's get started. Also, on a side note, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that notification bell for updates. Okay, let's get back to the video. So what is a stack? A stack is simply a linear data structure that supports LIFO operations. And linear data structure meaning that every element is added sequentially and removed sequentially from the stack. Now, LIFO means last in, first out. And I think one of the best ways to understand this is to picture a stack of plates. So picture you had a stack of like 30 plates, and you want to add a plate to that stack. The best place to add a plate to that stack is at the top. If you tried to add a plate to the stack in the middle, you'd probably end up breaking some of the plates. And the best way to remove a plate from that stack is also from the top, because again, if you removed a plate from the middle, you'd end up breaking all the plates. So basically, the last plate you add in is the first plate you remove. And that's what a stack is. Now, let's talk about the push operation. Since we're using an array, the best way to represent an empty stack is to have our top be set to negative 1. Because if our top were 0, it would mean that there's an element at index 0 in our array. So let's see what a push operation looks like. When we push an element to our stack, our top goes up by one index, so our top is now at index 0. If we push another element, our top is now at index 1. Another element, our top is at index 2. And another element, our top is at index 3. Now, let's look at a pop operation. So popping an element off the top of our stack is synonymous with removing an element from the top of our stack. So let's see what that looks like. If we remove the top element from our stack, our top will now be at index 2. If we remove another element from our stack, our top will now be at index 1. If we remove another element from our stack, our top will be at index 0. And if we remove the last element from our stack, our top will be set to negative 1. Now, let's discuss the common operations associated with a stack. Here we have four common operations. Push, pop, peak, and is empty. We'll be going over all of these operations. But first, let's see what the structure of a stack class actually looks like. So here is the class structure of a stack. I have three instance variables. The size, which will be used to represent the number of elements in our stack. An array of integers, which will be used to represent the elements in our stack. And the top, which is going to represent the top index in our stack. Now for simplicity, I'm going to use an array of integers to represent the stack, but you can also use like an array of objects or anything else. In my constructor, I take an initial size that will be used to represent the initial size for a stack. I also instantiate my instance variables as size and top. Now, it isn't necessary to instantiate size with a value of 0 inside of their constructor, because by default size already has a value of 0. I just did this for completeness. Now, let's see what the push method looks like. We take in some data, and we're going to add that data to the top of our stack. So, the first thing we'd want to do is check if our stack is full. And if our stack is full, then we cannot just add that element to the top of our stack, because we don't have space to add it. In that case, we'd have to resize our stack. However, in this case, our stack is not full. So, we simply increment our top index by 1, and add our data to the top of our stack, which is at index 2. And then we increment the size of our stack to 3. And on a side note, I'll also be going over the isFull and resize method later in this video. So, Let's now move on to the pop method. So in our pop method, unlike the push method where we need to know if our, if our stack is full or not, in the pop method we don't care about if our stack is full. We care about if our stack is empty, because if our stack is empty, then that means there's nothing to pop. So let's go through this. The first thing I do is check if my stack is not empty. Well, in this case, our stack is not empty, so I proceed with my if block. So the first thing I want to do is to be able to return that data once I pop that element off the stack. So I'll use my peak operation. All my peak does is get the element at the top of the stack and return it. So it'll return that data to my variable removed data. Then I decrement my top index by 1. And the reason I don't have to remove that value at index 2 is because I'll replace it once I add more elements to my stack. Then I decrement my size, so my size is now 2, and all I do is return my removed data. Now, in the case that my stack was empty, all I'll do is throw a new empty stack exception to indicate that I have an empty stack. Now, let's look at the peak method which we just used. So in our peak method, it's pretty simple. If our stack is empty, all we do is throw a new empty stack exception like we did with the pop method. And if our stack is not empty, which is the case right now, we'll simply return the element at the top of the stack, 
So basically we're going to return the elemented index too. Now let's look at the empty method. Now this method is pretty short and simple. If our top is less than zero, then we'll return true. If our top is more than or equal to zero, we'll return false. And in this case, the top of the stack is at index two, which is more than or equal to zero, so we'll return false. Now let's move on to the full method. In the full method, all we do is check if the size, which is the number of elements in our stack, is equal to the size of our array. In this case, since our size is equal to three, and the size of our array is also equal to three, then we'll return true. Now, here's a resize method. Now, in this method, we have a bit more code, but it'll become very simple once we go through it. Also, please note that this method, it keeps increasing the size for our stack if our stack is full. If our stack becomes or gets a lot less elements, it wouldn't decrease the size of our stack. Now, you could implement that by yourself, and it's very easy to do so. And once we go through this code, you should be able to do that fairly easily. So let's go through the resize method. The first thing I want to do is figure out what size I want my stack to be. In this case, I want to double the length of my stack. So if my stack can hold a maximum of three elements, now I want my stack to hold a maximum of six elements. Now, I'll create a new integer array to represent my new stack. And the size of my new stack is going to be equal to new size. Then, in my for loop, all I do is copy all the elements from my old stack into my new stack. And once that's done, all I do is set my nums reference variable to now reference the object that new array references. Now, let's move on to the complexity analysis. For the time complexity, our push operation is going to, at worst case, take linear time. And the reason for this is because our push method contains a resize method. And our resize method then copies all the elements from our old stack onto our new stack, which is in the worst case going to take linear time. Now with that being said, only in our absolute worst case are we actually resizing our stack. On the average case, all we do is consider we have enough space is just increment our index and add our data at that index. Now for our pop method, it's going to be a constant time operation. And this is just for our pop method. If you were to make the pop method so that our uh, stack decreases or shrinks dynamically, then we'd have to copy all the elements from our old array to a smaller array. And that's also going to be a linear time operation. However, in our pop method, it's going to be a constant time operation because we don't do that. All we do is just pop the element off the top of our stack. For the peak method, that's going to be a constant time operation. The reason being is because all we do is return the element at the top of our stack. For our isEmpty method, all we do is check whether or not our top is less than zero. And that's going to be a constant time operation. Now, for our push method, we discussed the resize method. So all our resize method does is copy all the elements from our old stack onto a new stack. And since we're copying all the elements over, it's going to take a linear amount of time to do that. For our isFull method, similar to our isEmpty method, all we do is check if the current number of elements in our array is equal to the length of our array. And if it is, we return true. Otherwise, we return false. Now, let's move on to the space complexity. For a push method, we're going to use a linear amount of space. The reason being is because we have to create an entirely new array to push all that data into. So that's why it's going to be a linear space complexity. Now, for a pop method, we're going to use a constant amount of space, simply because we're not resizing our array. If we were resizing our array or shrinking our array dynamically, then again, we'd have to copy all our elements back onto a new array. And so we end up using a linear amount of space as well. However, our pop method doesn't do that. And since the size of our stack does not affect the amount of space our pop method uses, we have a constant space complexity for our pop method. Now in our peak method, the size of our array does not affect the amount of space our peak method uses. So again, that's going to be a constant space complexity. Similarly for our isEmpty method, the size of our array also does not affect the amount of space our isEmpty method uses. So again, that's going to be a constant space complexity. Moving on to our resize method, our resize method uses a linear amount of space because we have to create an array to copy all those previous elements into when we resize our array. So that's going to be a linear space complexity. And similar to our is empty method or is full method, also the size of our array does not affect how much space our is full method uses. So that's also going to be a constant space complexity. If you enjoyed this content, please hit that like and subscribe button. See you in the next video.